Hey guys, it's HD here, and today I'm going to show you a quick, no BS guide to playing 3DS games on your computer using Citra. It's an emulator that I've used to make a bunch of videos on 3DS games like showcasing glitches as well as hacks, so I wanted to show you how I do it. It only takes a matter of minutes to set up, so we're going to get right into it. So, like I said, the software to emulate 3DS games is called Citra, which you can find with a simple Google search or by going to citra-mu.org. The homepage is pretty standard, showing off demo images and some progress reports. But all we really care about for now is the download button. If this doesn't appear, you can just click on the download tab at the top, and on this page, it'll give you a download to install Citra. This should auto detect which platform your computer is running on. I'm using Windows, so it'll give me that version, but selecting other platforms here will show you that it's also available for Mac and Linux systems. Upon pressing the download button, you'll get an installer, so once it's done, run it. It's a pretty standard install, but there is one thing I want to talk about, so I'll walk you through it. Press next to be brought to the installation location screen. It defaults to your app data folder, so unless you really want to change that, you can just press next again. Now we're on the only real decision you'll have to make, and that's picking a version. The two options are the Canary build and the Nightly one. The Nightly is the one I recommend as it's the newest stable version, meaning it's been tested and approved. While the Canary version is the same as the Nightly, but also includes new features that haven't been fully tested yet. So basically Canary is almost like a beta of the newest version, and Nightly is the stable, known to work one. I'm just going to be installing the Nightly version for this video, but it's up to you what you want to do. The tutorial is the same either way, so it's not really a big deal. Next is just accepting the license agreement, so read through that or don't, I don't care, and check accept. Now you should be at the start menu shortcuts. I wouldn't worry about this too much and just kind of leave it how it is unless you want shortcuts in a specific spot. Next, we're finally ready to install it. So as long as it says you have the right amount of space it says it needs, you can just press install. This can take a couple of minutes, so I'm just gonna fast forward past this part, but once it's done, you'll get a confirmation screen and we're all done on that front. So now Citra is ready to run, I'd recommend just bringing up the Windows menu and typing Citra. I like to pin it to my taskbar so I can easily run it when needed, but that's up to you. The first time you open Citra, you'll likely be greeted to this screen asking if you want to share anonymous data to help improve the software. This is again up to you. If you select yes, it would likely just send the devs error codes if your game crashes or something. I'll just say yes though. Next, as it's kind of tough to miss, it wants us to add a new games folder. This is where you should store all your 3DS game files, as it saves you time having to click file, load file, and then navigating to the game you want to play every single time. As you'll see in a second, it will create a nice little menu for you to pick from. So I just have a blank folder here called 3DS game, so I'll save that as my games directory. So now it's time for the fun part of any emulation guide, downloading games. There are two ways of doing this. You can either hack your 3DS and dump all the game files that you have and own, or find files online. The Citra website does show you how to dump files from your 3DS so you can follow that guide if you want. However, I do not own a hacked 3DS, so online is my go-to option. Unfortunately, I can't show you exactly where to find games as my video could get taken down, but I'd recommend Googling 3DS ROMs archive or finding a Reddit post. The types of files you want to have are either .cia, .cci, or 3DS. I have a few games downloaded already, so I'll place those into the games folder I showed a second ago. And now when you open Citra, they'll be visible in this little menu. We're almost ready to start playing games, but there's two more things I want to cover. Compatibility and settings. As you probably noticed here on this menu, there's a compatibility tab with icons ranging from great, okay, and not tested. This basically tells you how each game runs on a Citra emulator. On the main website, you can click on the compatibility tab to look at seemingly all 3DS games and what their rating is. Most games fall under the great or okay categories, which means that they'll run well for the most part, but you may run into some bugs or graphical errors while playing. For my personal experience, I wouldn't worry about this too much. I've played through good chunks of Pokemon Y and Alpha Sapphire, and while they do say only okay, I've had next to no issues at all. But Citra is a constant work in progress and isn't perfect, so don't be surprised if something is a little wacky in your games. Most of the time though, you can just get around it or ignore it. Now onto the settings in Citra, if you press the emulation tab in the top left corner and select configuration, you will bring up an options menu. Most of the settings in here you can just leave how they are, but you can do things like set your birthday and username here. The only thing I would recommend changing is the internal resolution in the graphics tab. You can make games look better than the standard 3DS by changing this option from the native 400 by 240 to something higher. You may have to play around with this as you'll need a good graphics card if you're doing something like 8 times native, but for my computer, I run 4 times native as it allows me to run it smoothly and record at the same time. My PC has an i5-7600 processor with an NVIDIA GTX 1080 graphics card, which is just a few years old, but it still gets the job done. 
The other menu on here is the screen layout, which changes how the screens look when you launch a game. You may want to change this depending on the game you're playing, but I personally just use side by side as it'll show both screens top and bottom just side by side. The only other important menu in here is the controls tab. This is where you can map a controller or keyboard to their respective 3DS controls. Just click on one of the buttons and it'll say press key and then press the button you want to map it to. So this can be either a controller or the keyboard. I personally just plug in a Nintendo Switch Pro controller and play with that. So this is my button config. But when you are done, you can just press OK, and I think we're finally ready to play games. All you gotta do now is double click on any of the games on your menu and they'll load right up. So congratulations, you can now play 3DS games on your PC anytime you want. This also makes it a whole lot easier to record videos without having to install a 3DS capture card, which if you didn't know is extremely complicated. Plus, Citra makes the games look a whole lot better than a native 3DS, so it's a win-win. If this is all you want to do, then enjoy your games because you are good to go. But I wanted to quickly show you how to hack your games with cheat codes. After launching the game you want to hack, simply click on the emulation tab at the top and then configure current game. All the way down on the right of these menus is the cheats tab. As you can see, I already have a few added, but all you gotta do is hit add cheat, give it a name and add any notes you want to type, then paste the code in the code section. You can find cheats easily by just googling the name of your game followed by cheat codes or action replay codes. But yeah, once you've added it, make sure the box here is checked whenever you want it on and you should be good to go. So that should really be everything you need to get the Citra emulator running 3DS games on your computer. I wanted to keep the video as short as possible in order to make it easy to understand and follow along. For 95% of you, this is likely all you'll want to do anyway, but there are some other options to mess around with like online multiplayer. But this is where I'm gonna leave this video off. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and I'll try and help out as best as I can. If you wanna know how to emulate and hack Switch games, I did make a video on that earlier this year in a similar style to this one. So check that out if you're so inclined. But for now, I'm gonna get up out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, see ya!